Hey class, let me introduce you the next model here. This is the so-called Nicholson-Bailey model, and it's a little different than the Laca Volterra model, primarily in that it has discrete uh, time uh, built into it. So what happens is in this model, a group of hosts have a, let's imagine an annual life cycle. Uh, they lay their eggs, they lay uh, their larvae right here. The larvae develop through some stages they eventually pupate and they go back to the adult stage. So let's imagine that this whole thing here takes one time step. Attacking this, uh, this potential host, let's imagine it's a caterpillar or a fly or something like that, is a group of parasitoids. Now the parasitoids have a life cycle where the adults parasitize the larvae and uh, they lay their eggs in there or on top of them. And then the eggs of those lar of the parasitoid hatches, they feed on the larval stages of the, uh, of the host, and they kill the host eventually. They pupate, they overwinter here, and they emerge the next uh, year as adults ready to parasitize the larvae uh, here. Obviously, uh, a certain fraction of these uh, hosts uh, are gonna escape, otherwise there's no larvae here to parasitize uh, the next year around. So this happens in discrete time steps. Adults lay eggs, the eggs turn to larvae, the parasitoids can attack those and everything is kind of synchronized uh, within that time period. This, is, this model makes a couple of really simple assumptions. First of all, it assumes that the hosts are uniformly distributed in the environment, that the parasitoid searches at random and it has a certain capacity to discover those hosts in the environment. Maybe it's smelling them, maybe it sees them, a variety of uh, different things. And the ability to do that is that that area of discovery is fixed. Um, it doesn't get bigger, it doesn't get smaller, it doesn't have the capacity to learn or anything like that. The population growth rate of uh, the parasite, uh, of, I'm sorry, the population growth rate of the host uh, has a growth rate lambda. This is the finite rate of increase based on the uh, discrete time step uh, model that I introduced to you uh, last time. So there's no density dependence in this, which means if there's no um, or other mortality agent and lambda is greater than one, this population is gonna grow to infinity. If lambda is one, population replaces itself. If lambda is less than one, population uh, declines all on its own. But there's no density dependent uh, feature there. The parasitoid can assume or, uh, I'm sorry, the parasitoid can attack or consume an unlimited number of, uh, of potential prey uh, uh, hosts and uh, has no uh, limits on how it can do that. So the more it encounters, the more uh, it can attack and it's never limited by the number of eggs it has, for example. Uh, and the other thing is that the parasitoids can't distinguish between hosts that have been parasitized versus hosts that are healthy. So if it encounters a healthy host, this generates uh, a potential new uh, parasitoid. A new larva uh, gets attacked and the, um, uh, and the parasitoid uh, can live within that. If it attacks a host that's already been uh, parasitized, it's kind of a waste. Whoever was there first gets that host. It doesn't have an ability to usurp that host. And even if it does, um, it kills off one of its own to replace uh, another one. So it's kind of wasted time, uh, but it makes the, this particular assumptions. And again, the generations of the parasitoid and the host uh, are discrete and fully synchronized. Let's take a look at what the equations for a model like this might actually uh, look like. Okay, here is the very simple uh, equation for the host. It uses the discrete time uh, finite rate of increase uh, uh, equation, where if you know the hosts at time t, you multiply it by that lambda term, you can figure out how many hosts are available uh, um, are present at time t plus one. Now, I just uh, told you that the hosts that can make it to that next generation are only those that escape parasitism. Those that, that get attacked can't make it to the next uh, generation. So we can split up the total number of hosts here into these two quantities, those that escape and those that are attacked. And really, only the ones that escape are the ones that we should multiply by lambda to figure out what the population is in the next generation. On the other hand, the hosts that are attacked are the ones that generate a new parasitoid right here. So here's the relationship uh, between these two. Now, this may seem a bit um, 
unreasonable that one host generates one parasitoid. But if we want to imagine that there's a gregarious parasitoid where a female might lay 10 eggs or 100 eggs into a particular host, uh, then you can just multiply the number of hosts that are attacked by some constant C, like, you know, that's a multiplier. So for every one that's attacked, maybe you get 10 new uh, parasitoids. But if no attacks actually happen, the population dies out. There's just, you know, there's no way for these parasitoids to live without actually attacking a host. So this is an important uh, consideration here. So how do we figure out how many hosts are attacked? Well, here is where those assumptions about how these systems work comes into play. If you know how many hosts are there, if you know how many parasitoids are there, if these things are uniformly distributed and randomly uh, encountering each other, then really all you need to do is multiply the, uh, prob the, the number of hosts times the number of parasitoids to get you an idea of the encounter rates. And this A, this area of uh, discovery, is really kind of an, uh, the, a multiplier that says of those potential interactions, how many actually uh, result in a, in a successful discovery and parasitism of that uh, particular uh, host. So not every single encounter is going to re result, uh, not every single potential encounter is going to result in an actual um, parasitism. So the number of hosts that are attacked is the product of the host and the parasite density times this factor here, which has to do with how efficient uh, these hosts are, the parasitoids are at, uh, at finding, their, um, finding their hosts. So again, you could think of A as this area of discovery. It's going to vary from species to species, um, and it defines these uh, lifetime encounter rates here between uh, hosts and uh, parasitoid. You could think of A as kind of the uh, proportion of the total hosts that are actually uh, attacked. So how do we actually figure out how many hosts are encountered uh, if the parasitoids are searching randomly within an area with an average density of hosts uh, T, or at hosts at, of hosts at time uh, T. Well, I'm going to spare you the details of this, but you're going to just have to uh, kind of accept that there's a way to actually calculate the number of hosts that are, uh, that are going to be discovered and the number of hosts that are not going to be discovered uh, in this. I'll, you don't need to know these particular details, but um, if the encounters occur at random, and the proportion, you can calculate the proportion of hosts that are either encountered zero times, that is, they've escaped parasitism, the number of hosts that are encountered one time or two times or so on, up to as many uh, hosts at our, that are actually available. Now, what's interesting is that the proportion of hosts that are encountered zero times is basically those that escape parasitism. So if we can calculate what fraction of the hosts are never discovered, uh, given this random encounter rate, remember, if they're just moving around randomly, uh, you know, with a certain density of host and parasite, there's some fraction that's never going to get discovered just by random uh, chance alone. And so we can actually calculate that by this uh, equation here. Don't get freaked out. This is basically comes from this random model of uh, the plot that comes from the Poisson uh, distribution. So don't worry about how, how that's actually derived. Um, if uh, the proportion that escape parasitism is e to the negative apt, then one minus that is everything that's left over that got attacked. And it may have gotten attacked once, it might have gotten attacked twice, but it doesn't matter. Only, only a discovery is what matters there. So here's those that escaped parasitism. So to calculate how many hosts escape parasitism, if you know the proportion that escape, if you know what your density of hosts is, you just multiply that proportion uh, by, you multiply the fraction that escapes parasitism to figure out what the total number is. So let's imagine that the proportion of hosts that escape parasitism is 30%. If there's 10 hosts in a population, 30% of 10 that escape parasitism means three hosts escaped parasitism, which then means one minus three out of 10 seven hosts got attacked, okay? So that's basically what this, these equations allow you to do. Well, now you know how many hosts escaped parasitism. Those are gonna to contribute to the population of the host growth, which is this, which now you can multiply by lambda to figure out how many are gonna show up in that next uh, generation, T plus one. And for the parasitoid, if you know this number, again, 
the number attacked is how many parasitoids are going to show up, assuming that one parasitoid comes out of one host. So that's all you need. This is the equation for the parasitoids at time t. This is the equation of the hosts, I'm sorry, at time t plus 1. And this is the equation of the hosts at time t plus 1. And you need to know something about the population size of the hosts and the population size of the parasitoids. Now, what's interesting about this particular uh, series of coupled equations is that they actually do a very good job at modeling uh, this particular system here that was the study system that, was, uh, that, that it was actually designed for based on this particular uh, biology uh, of this uh, little parasitic uh, wasp and carcia attacking whiteflies. Uh, it actually attacks the larvae of the whiteflies. The populations are synchronized. Uh, Trialeroides is, uh, is the genus of the um, whiteflies. And uh, this is on a log scale. Uh, Actually, I don't know if that's true. So uh, if this is the density of the host, you can see that as the parasites increase here because they're attacking a host, the density of the hosts uh, begins to decrease. But then because there's fewer hosts, the parasites start to decrease, which is similar to what we saw with the Locke of Volterra, that there's kind of a cause and effect. Um, there's fewer hosts to be discovered, uh, which means more of them uh, escape parasitism. Um, when that happens, the populations can start to rebound. The uh, parasitoids uh, decrease because they are in a one generation lag, but now their numbers come back really strong. Look at how high this number is compared to how high this number is here. These exploit a lot of hosts. Uh, they're starting to attack the hosts here. These populations start to decline. The next generation, even more parasitoids emerge because they uh, show up a generation later. Now there's a ton of parasitoids around. They force the population to go even more, uh, to decline even more. And what ends up happening in the system is that you see the oscillations between the parasite and the host get bigger and bigger and bigger. They don't seem to stabilize around some particular equilibrium here, but they actually fluctuate more and more wildly until the population of the hosts actually goes to extinction. And when that happens, there's no more host to parasitize, which means that the, um, that the wasps will also go extinct in this particular uh, situation. These were in kind of cage uh, types of uh, environments, greenhouse type of uh, environments. What this suggests is that for when you're modeling Nicholson-Bailey types of interactions that have this time lag built in, where the number of adults of the predator, the parasitoid, show up one generation later in full force, and they have this extra hard effect on the population, this is destabilizing. This actually causes the populations of the host to drop more than uh, they otherwise should in order to maintain enough parasitoids around to keep this population stable. So these are unstable dynamics. So that equation that I, that I just showed you, uh, which seems like a reasonable uh, starting place, does not generate um, a st stability in this type of uh, this type of an interaction.